Hello, my Eki friends. Snow forecasted for central Ontario in September. That's why I love Ontario. I love winter. Hello, my Eki friends. Cindy Lynn and Mr. Eki. Oh, wait. I, my mic isn't on. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Is yours on? I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Yours is on. Are you sure okay. it's on? Now mine's on. <laughs> I don't think so. My, my All my right. Chat you know, it wouldn't be uh, my inky fingers if it wasn't uh, audio things going on as usual, right? But if you are just tuning in to the replay, you can skip forward about eight minutes because I always come in a little early. Hello, Allie. Susie Fick. There's a new name. Hello, Susie. No, she's been around. Oh, she's been around. I'm sorry. I don't often get to read the chat. So, And Kimberly has graced us with her presence, even though she is on vacation, traveling, visiting family. Mary, Joe, Charlene, Dana, Renee... Jeanette, look at y'all here. Cheryl's here. I feel like I haven't talked to Cheryl in forever. Ruth and Miss Elizabeth. Uh, Miss Elizabeth has been in the hospital, you guys, for quite some time. So send some nice, good vibes and good inky friends love over to Miss Elizabeth because uh, she's been in there quite some time. So... I'm, I'm, she's been there almost long enough that she could be a nurse now. I'm sure she's been trained and knows everything. Hello, Maria Jameson from Winnipeg, Manitoba. We've got, look, honey, a neighbor. A new name that's a neighbor. And Alexia. I think I've seen Alexia before. Oh, thank you, my little space buns. <laughs> They're kind of like a little bit of a mess. You know what this is? This is, I don't feel like doing my hair. And I got it cut and it's, I went for it because it's hair. It grows, right? And the bangs, by the way, do you notice I never wear them? I <laughs> hairspray them back. I don't like the bangs. They got to go. But my hair is a little too short, so I'm not very comfortable with it. So I'm trying to, I'm playing around with all these other little hairdos. But they're, they're pretty easy to do. You just put two ponytails and then wrap little bits around at a time. Don't try and do the whole thing. Like wrap little bits and use about 572 bobby pins and you're good to go. I have to fix my glasses. I was trying to clean them here. But um, let me just look at this so I can talk about some things. Oh, I have some winners drawn for you guys as well. Random org. Um, I don't do it live anymore because you can't see who's who anyway because of all the email addresses and um, whatnot, right? Personal information on people. Um, and people, some of them were like, I don't want everybody seeing my name because YouTube has a different, they have a different name on YouTube than they do on there. So anyway, random org. So um, winners drawn. I've got um, my favorite things was number 11. So person number 11 was Katie McLean. So I'm, I think Katie's won something too in the past. I know your name, honey. So you won a $25 gift card from my favorite things. You can go ahead and fill out a winner's form down below. And if you haven't watched the video, don't worry. I will be posting it on my Facebook group tomorrow. The <clears throat> Spellbinders. And uh, this person <clears throat> is not here, but they usually watch the replays. And you're going to want to cash in your $25 gift card ASAP because Spellbinders has a ridiculous sale right now. It's their 1, 2, 3, 5, 10 sale. And the stuff on there is ridiculous. And if you go to my kit.co slash my inky fingers, uh, my inky fingers right there, you can see the stores, like places I shop, enter through there, and then uh, I get credit for that. So I always appreciate that. Thank you very much. And always remember too, before you check out of whatever shop you're shopping in, go back and re-enter on my link because you want to make sure my cookie hasn't fallen off because some of them are 24 hours, some are a week. It do, you know, And if you just kind of re-click the link, then I get credit for that and it helps support my business and I always appreciate that. But scrap the uh, spellbinders sorry was number 17 and that was miss jen rexford so everybody knows who jen is so congratulations to both katie and jen 
Those are now closed. I forgot to write closed on them. I just drew them. I was in there too and I forgot to write closed on them, but those are closed. The pink and main is open though, okay? So that one was uh, unboxed and I showed you guys a card on the card kit crafters. Words are hard. Card kit crafters today and the link is there, okay? So you can go, you can always go to my website too, okay? Any blog post has it in there. Well, any new blog post, I guess, so... You know, I'm going to have, I think I need a specials page so that you guys have a one-stop shop to find all your sales and specials that are going on, right? So I'm going to have to get on that, I think. But I want to shout out to um, <clears throat> a whole bunch of companies. Just a second. <clears throat> it's very dry. It's that, it's that time of year where summer's ending and it's so, so dry. But nevertheless, I want to shout out to a whole bunch of companies. I'm going to start listing them by name in October because I have rallied together and reached out to a lot of the companies that, well, I've reached out to all the companies I've worked with. Not all of them have got back to me yet, but I have literally asked them to donate something to the Inky Bestie Appreciation Party that will be in December. Um, if you're an Inky Bestie, December is, there's no master class. We have an Inky Bestie Appreciation Party instead. And we're going to play some games and there'll be prizes. I think I'm going to do something fun for how to choose your prizes. Um, I want to kind of make it a little bit fun. So I've got some really cool ideas for that. And yeah, so I've got some companies. There's some there's some nice little prizes that they've offered up too. So card kits, shout out to Spellbinders, My Favorite Things, and Pink and Main for supporting and sponsoring the card kit crafters group with their card kits thank you so much for that and offering you guys a $25 gift card every single month yes I would so shop your affiliate pages thank you Alexia I appreciate that and go to the kit.co and look at my favorite shops or just go to myinkyfingers.com and click tools and supplies I love and bam or on the home page my favorite shops it's everywhere right and if you don't see <clears throat> your favorite store within my affiliate links ask me because um I may have an affiliate link but because I haven't literally shopped there yet I don't put it up because I haven't really experienced it and I want to make sure that I'm sharing links with you guys from places that I've actually ordered from that you know I support so with that being said today are you guys ready for it today oh wait hold on Hold oh, on. Forget it. Oh, we gotta we gotta do we gotta do this. We gotta thank all of our inky besties and inky buddies that are over on the website. If you have joined my channel, thank you for your support. You don't, however, get any links if you're on my channel. You have to go over to the website. Now, with that being said, I see a whole bunch of names in here. Hello, Lee. I see a whole bunch of names in here. I won't call you out in front of everybody. Hello, Gina. Um and, and if you guys notice, a lot of the names that I speak out and I talk to, I know them so well because they are a Ink Squad member, either an Inky Buddy or an Inky Bestie. And an Inky Bestie gets five exclusive extra videos a month. And there's no ads. There's a lot more chit chat and whatnot. And I get to know you guys so much better. There's a real time stamping at the end of every month. And today for Inky Besties, there is an after party. And I am going to, I'm going to, I wonder if I want to tell you guys or not. I'm going to do something really special tonight anyway for the Inky Besties. Now, the nice thing is you can go right now down in the description and click the free trial link. It takes you directly to the Inky Bestie. You get, whenever you join, you get the rest of the month free. There's still two more videos left this month, one tonight and one on the last Friday of the month for Inky Besties. If it's an Inky Buddy, don't join right now okay don't don't select the inky buddy because there's no more videos for the inky buddy and you're going to lose your free trial right so if some of you guys that are new head over to the website during this hour you'll automatically be able to click the inky bestie links up at the top of the website and that page will open for you and you will see tonight's after dark and you will be able to come for a whole nother hour and hang out with us and then i get to know you guys a little bit better ali says she's still not listed so you missed her again <gasps> You know, Allie, you know why you're not listed, honey? Because on the the first of the month when I did it, 
your remember we had that problem with your membership and you'll come up next month i'm so sorry everybody everybody miss Allie is an inky bestie and she's been an inky bestie for some time but there was an issue with the membership so she didn't appear there and i apologize for that but i'm going to show you guys really quick for those that haven't seen them we've got the my inky fingers pin and the wilbur pin and you know what i haven't pointed out i haven't pointed out <laughs> that the backs of these is such a soft rubber. I was thinking about it today because I'm wearing one of the pins and as you can see, like this has no collar, right? So when I put it on, I thought, oh, I'm gonna feel that. And I don't even feel it there, literally, because the backs are so nice and soft. So they are on the website, the uh, little Wilbur pin. This is our little channel mascot, the little ladybug. He has, or she, has been released in this color. You will never see this pin again after it is gone. It says, where's Wilbur down here right there? It's kind of hard to, to really pick it all up on the camera here, but it had a good little angle there a second ago. There you go. So, so cute, right? And then the Mayan Key Fingers uh, splatter, of course. So the, I have a limited amount of these. I don't know if I'll reorder them. We'll see how they do. Um, I don't really have a problem reordering those, but this guy he will uh, release again in a different color, okay? If he does well, if he sells out. I mean, he's pretty much, uh, pretty close to being sold out already. So I think we're at um, over between 60 and 70%, almost maybe 75% sold. So um, if you are an Inky Fingers lover, you'll be able to collect all of those over the years, right? And Inky Besties, I have got um, a nice little coin for the one year, 10 years. So if you've been an Inky Bestie for a year. So now's the time to sign up because we've got the Inky Bestie Appreciation Party coming up. And then you can start fresh next year for your one year, 10 year and get a coin. So that's kind of a fun little thing. So, oh, I thought somebody lost their Wilbur pin. That's you talking. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Did you leave a review? I think you did leave a review, actually. Did, did, did get I, know. I lost my Wilbur pin? Oh, do I get it? He lost his Wilbur pin. <laughs> Where did Wilbur go? <laughs> Where did Wilbur go? Yes, I think, Kelly, if you... And I want to also tell all my besties, all the master classes you've been to, they're on the website, right? So go over there and leave reviews on them, especially the Copic one, because I'm going to show you guys um, tonight coloring hair okay because it is national love your red hair day so for those of you that have a friend that's a redhead or you are a redhead crazy. Um, what's that Nothing. did you say crazy yeah. <laughs> november the 5th is national love your red hair day so i'm going to flip this over in a second but i want you guys to be aware there are five of these Okay, I bought this at the place that it's linked down in the description, and there are five. Now, if you're in Canada, you're going to fall off your chair because it's on Amazon, and it will reroute you to the Canadian Amazon, and you'll fall off your chair. It's ridiculous. It's over $30, but if you want it, then you, whatever. I love stamping Bella, but in the U.S., it's under $20, okay, and there's only five of these left, so... I'm warning you right now, <laughs> don't sit on it. I went to Stamping Bella and I don't believe, let me, uh, honey, will you go to stampingbella.com on another window? And type in Huggy in the search and just see what comes up. So tonight I'm going to show you how to color red hair straight and red hair curly and I'm going to color all of the rest of this image as well no I didn't find anything yeah it didn't and I looked at Simon's stamp for you guys like I I looked around and I couldn't and I'm not an affiliate with Stamping Bella but I would have linked it for you guys anyway so I'm thinking it's a retired image and I mean come on they're so stinking cute and there's two stamps by the way so what I did on the last card I made with these um I used Oh, okay, this was the card I made. I stamped an extra one, by the way, I guess. So there it is. But uh, nevertheless, I'm not doing to my sweetest friend today. But I stamped this one on the front corner of the envelope, right? So I stamped this twice. Paper has two sides, thank God, because that one didn't stamp very nice. But anyway, so I used that there, and it's got the little heart. So it's worth it for the American price. Um, 
my value is not $30 for this Canadian. I don't know. Your, how you value things might be different. And you might be like, I'll totally pay that. I don't know. It's totally up to you. But I'm just warning you, there's only five left. So this one will go back in here. And I am going to show you guys tonight how to color red hair. So I have got as well, just so you guys know, next month is a um, Copic Coloring 102. And the nice thing about the Copic Coloring 102, it's a follow-up to this last class. And if you didn't, if you weren't here to be a part of the Ink Squad and watch the master class for free as part of your Inky Bestie membership, you can purchase the master class. But I I urge you to get a free trial because on your free trial, you get a 15% discount on the website, okay? So get a free trial and then pick up the class. Now in the class, you're going to get these here sheets that I made, they belong to me. And then you'll see in the class what how to do this and what you're gonna wanna do with those. But you're also going to get these, okay? And this is what we're going to focus on in the next master class. We're going to pick a few of these. I'm going to teach you how to make these on your own and start filling these up and name them whatever you want. But more importantly, we're going to color some images, okay? So you're going to want to grab, um, you know, I might think of an image that maybe, you know, maybe I'll... Uh, I don't know if I can get something drawn up that quick. I was going to see if I could talk to my artist and get something drawn up really quick, but we'll see. Leave it with me because I have some digital stamps, but they're all animals and I want you guys to color people. I don't know. Um, maybe I should run a poll. Maybe I'll run a poll and see if you guys want an animal or a person. You know what I mean? Because maybe animals would be okay and then I can include some digital stamps for you guys. But I am going to do the skin first. And I'm going to use, I'm really bad. I'm not Chrissy Gets Crafty here. And I always say that. You guys should watch her. Chrissy, Chrissy, Chrissy Gets Crafty. I'm sure, I don't know. I subscribe to her and her stuff pops up every now and again. All she does is Copic Color all day long. And she's a big Lawn Fawn fan. So if you like Lawn Fawn stuff, then um, she would definitely be a good channel. And if you go there and say, hey, Mikey Finger sent me over here and said hi, she'll be like, who the heck is that? So I'm going to do my skin first. And my skin is 350, 51, and 50. 50, uh, excuse me, 21. So I'm going to zoom in and maybe what I'll do is I'll zoom my camera a little bit. There we go. So you can actually get up close and personal tonight for the coloring. So I'm not going to kind of um, go over too much about uh, what I do here, the process, because I did all of that in my Copic coloring uh, masterclass. But if you've watched me for any length of time, you know that I am a lay the light color down first, bring in the medium, blend it out with the light, go back in with your darkest, and then work backwards again from there. Um, the biggest thing about Copic coloring is the alcohol is what helps your markers blend. And in order for them to start blending, they need to be wet. And it's the saturation in your cardstock that aids in the blending, right? So um, ink and paper combinations are important. And um, that's going to dry. It looks like um, it looks like there's a black mark here, but it's from the back. And that should dry pretty clear. If it doesn't, I'm going to be pretty upset. But uh, where was I? What was I seeing? I totally lost my train of thought now. Yep, it's gone. I'm trying to think what the heck I was talking about. I think I was talking about the, the blending, but uh, I lost I lost it. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of people that you watch um, kind of do their coloring differently. And you do you. You do what works for you. You do what you uh, are comfortable with. But I'll, ha I'll just let you know that where I learned is um, from... Copic coloring artists. Okay. Uh, I tend to, um, I tend to follow and watch a lot of artists because artists are artistic in a variety of different ways. And if you watch them, you can learn how to bring things into the card making world, which is where I get a lot of my hacks and DIYs and stuff because, uh, it's art, right? 
And the more art that you are involved in, and me, I have to dip my little inky fingers in everything. So I learn a lot that way about, you know, different art and things like that. So Copic coloring, I learned from like actual Copic artists. And this is the technique that they use. Um, and once you master this technique, you can get more lifelike in a lot of your images. If you look at my last studio tour, or my first one, one of the two, I've got a thing on the wall with all of the little images and girls that I've colored, and they literally look like they are, um, I'm going to use a back scratcher, and I'm going to turn on my fan over here, because it is getting warm in here. Come on. Oh, I'm missing the button, am I? Oh, there it goes, okay. Okay, we'll just turn you this way. Perfect. Uh, maybe we'll go up to level two because it is kind of warm. Gina says she's getting frustrated with the Copics because she's in Copics preschool. You're in Copics preschool? Get it? She's just I get it. it. Oh, Gina. Well, Gina, you saw the first one. So don't worry. You'll be here next month. You're a bestie. You'll be here next month to watch the next one. And it's practice, okay? So just remember... Um, you can always uh, go and download, uh, not download, go and get yourself, this is what you need to do. Get yourself a um, Copic Multiliner, okay? And with your Copic Multiliner, draw yourself a circle, all right? And then, which color was that? I don't know. Let's just go with the light. And then start with a circle. And if you Google um, how to shade a circle... Uh, play with that combination you should find a circle on google that's got the light coming in from one area look at that and i'm going to show you tonight once i get to this part i'm going to show you how i will do this and follow the picture and that might help you guys as well okay so i'm going to literally follow the picture and try to recreate what the artist did uh, when they colored that in and then you'll see how to follow along. And you don't have to have Copics, okay? If you've got the Tombos, you can follow along with those. How because about the Spectrum Noir? Yep, you Spectrum can follow Noir. along with those as well. Whoa. Absolutely. Um, just remember that if you use different supplies, you have to expect different results, right? So... We'll color their little legs and then we'll get moving on the rest of them here because this the skin as long as I get this done then then I'm a happy girl right so laying down the light coming in with the medium and as you can see I kind of lay my my shading wherever something meets something else is usually my rule of thumb because wherever something meets something else it's going to create contrast Okay, so when my hand comes down on my hand, there's contrast right in that area, right? So that's where I want to make sure that I am making it a little bit darker. Now, another little tip with your Copic coloring is uh, when you're blending, give it a second to soak in, okay? Because it will soak in and blend after you pull your marker away because do you see this? This is all saturation here, okay? So all of the alcohol, as it's evaporating, is blending your colors for you, all right? So give it a minute, and if you feel like there's some areas that aren't blended enough, then come back in, right? Be careful. Try and follow the same process that you did when you were originally laying your ink. And another tip, don't play cap roulette and get them all mixed up because then it wreaks havoc on you. Now, one tip I'm going to give you, too, is when it comes to cheeks, I like the R11 as my starter, okay? Because I can come in with the R11, and I can create my cheek, all right? Let me just put them down here. And once they're in, I can kind of look at them then and decide, okay, are they dark enough? Are they not dark enough, but pink enough? Are they where I want them to be? Because this here is basically going to push the color that's here down into it and leave this color, right? Now, I always have a piece of scratch paper because 
Oopsie. What you can do if you're struggling, come in with this tip and just create a really quickie little, you know, skin tone here. Oops, wrong tip, but that's okay. Just come in, lay your color down pretty quickly. Now, you do want this to be relatively dry because if you put this on right now, remember what I told you, how that Copic coloring, the, the marker is kind of blending still as the alcohol is evaporating. So you want to give that a second, but I'm going to give it a second and then I'm going to show you what I do with it, okay? So let's start with um, the blue. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do their hair last because... I'm just going to do their hair last. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at this and give you guys an idea on how to follow this because one of the best places to draw your inspiration from when you're trying to learn to cope with color and you're not quite confident enough to not look at a picture in color is the actual stamp, okay? Or go to the website. Um, I, I don't know about Stamping Bella because I've, I've not really visited their website in a long time, but I know places like My Favorite Things, they... Uh, pink and main you can go to my favorite things and look at the stamp and then there's a variety of cards and if there isn't on the website you're looking for just type this in type in stamping bella huggy squidgies on pinterest and you're going to get tons of cards okay so if these aren't your colors it's not your jam or let's say this wasn't colored okay you need inspiration go to pinterest so i'm going to show you how to follow this but this is probably dry now so what i do is i come in with my little cheek here and i put it down and i have if i don't like the color there i can come in with an r20 and just kind of add a little bit more there to make it a little pinker so you can see there's quite a difference between those pinks. Now, if you went and did that and you're like, eh, I don't think I like that, then all you've got to do is just work on pushing that color down through your paper. Now, do it little bits at a time because the more that you do it at once, the alcohol is going to need to spread out eventually because you've applied so much. If you're getting your lines all... Um, uh, blurring that's what the word I'm looking for if your lines are starting to blur and it as happens especially if you're printing so you have to be careful not to apply too much alcohol and I, when I say alcohol I mean your marker right you have to be careful not to apply too much but if you are whether it's a digital image or a stamped image and they're kind of blurring and bleeding then you're that's your marker you're putting too much not the brand of your marker you're just putting too much color at one time okay and when that happens to you just grab your jelly rolls, okay? These are in my kit.co. Um, grab these. I got a three-piece set in there. The number 10, I find, is the best one. So if you have a jelly roll and you're like, oh, it's not hiding where I went out of the lines or that bleeding, pick up a number 10, okay? So for this one, I'm going to choose BG15, BG32, and I'm going to pull the caps off the other side, BG09. So let's put the caps the right way around. And one of the things that uh, you can do is you can always bring out your scratch paper because I've got some colors that are super close to one another. You can go like this and you can go 32, okay? And then you can come here and you can go, okay, 15 because that almost looked like, you know what I mean? Could have been darker, lighter. If you're kind of you know struggling with which color is which, do that. Obviously, the other one's going to be the darkest one, but we're going to lay down our light color. Now, I want to try to put this in here as well so that you can see it at the same time. So let's see how I can do this here. So what I want to do is here's an area here where... Oopsie, that's not going to work now, is it? <laughs> Thanks, honey. For tell oh I guess he can't really see that I'm not in focus so there now I'm yeah, in focus I'm let's put this out of the way yeah, I don't all right see when you're okay there. so what I want to do is this area here they've created a yeah, shadow finish. here okay and there's it's darker up in here and where her little um, sleeve meets her dress all right there is a little bit of light up in there which I'm not sure why they did that because in my mind, the hair is going to cast a shadow down there. So you can try to put a shadow in there or the light in there if you want to. Or you can just go in later with a gel pen. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So in order to achieve this, I need to be able to get in my little coloring zone here. 
I'm going to start along this line and you can even draw the line if you want because it's going to blend anyway, right? And this is my light color and I'm just going to feather it in. And I'm going to keep this line in mind because I want to do something different down here, right? Because it lightens up there. So I'm going to apply my light, come in with my medium, and I'm just doing it in a feather motion because I find that if you do lines like this, those sharp edges are harder to blend than a feather, right? So fan is making my eyes water now. Okay, and come in with my, oh, I got to blend that out with my light color. Just blending that out. And you notice I'm not going all the way because the more I apply my light over my light over my light, the darker, darker, darker it's going to get. And I want to... I can create variation with one marker, right? So I want to not do a lot of that area until I get over there to come back towards where I'm working from. So here is where we're going to create this shadow. We're going to create it up here, here, and I probably should have created a little bit in here. We'll do that, bring in the light, and then we'll bring in the dark. There we go. And I'm going to blend it in with the medium. So in the Copic class, we'll, we'll go over a lot of these things like in great detail. So if you're really struggling, that's the place to go because you get to ask questions and it's right there one-on-one, -on -one, right? So if you are struggling with a certain thing or a certain technique or, you know, a certain blend, um, that's the place to ask your questions. And the other thing I want to point out is um, the Copic coloring, the first one, that goes into a lot of detail about what these numbers mean and how to kind of get an idea on what's going to work together and what's not. So that's a really valuable information as well. So that's definitely a class that if you missed, definitely want to put that on your wish list for sure. So I'm coming in with that medium because this whole area around where her hand is hugging into this girl is obviously going to have some contrast. And when I'm putting my darkest one in now, I'm just kind of going in like this, uh, like this, okay? I'm just kind of, whoops, not like that. I'm just adding little bits very, 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 very ever so lightly because I don't want to create um, a lot of dark in here for the shadowing, okay? So come in with my light. Blend that out. And then, or that was my medium, sorry. And then my light, okay? So now I'm going to blend all of that together. And now you can see as I come into this area, I've got a little bit different of a variation from this side to there. I'm going to blend this out a little bit more here. There we go. Yeah, I like that. And here, I'm going to come in after and draw some little lines there. So now, here, on her little sleeve, okay, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to start with the light and work my way out. Another little thing that you want to watch for, too, is these little lines. Like, you can see these little squiggly lines in her little shoulder here, the dress. That's indicating that there's contrast there, okay? There's a fold there or a pleat. Or something has occurred there on the fabric that's just causing a different variation. So that's a really good indicator for you on when to apply darker color, right? So I'm going to be very careful here because I don't want to go into her skin. I went a little bit in over there, but I'm not going to be too worried about that. I'll go in afterward and see if I can't push some of that down. I got a little teeny dot. Oh, you can't even see it there on that screen, but nevertheless. Okay, so there. Now, what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> I'm going to come in, I'm going to kind of do a little bit in here because we're working backwards now from the other part of the dress, so coming in from there. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to do these pleats. You're not going to believe how easy that's going to go. It's going to go like, I'll have it done in literally 60 seconds. Just flipping back and forth, light, medium, dark medium light, right? Okay, so here, 
see how they've got a little bit of shadow in each of the little pleats like each pleat has a little bit of shadow i'm going to show you how to do that so you're going to take your light and you're just going to come down and add a whole bunch of color don't go all the way to the end like don't go to the end of your pleats here and then come in with this one a little bit there and i'm I'm getting a little smaller as I go, okay, because the pleats are a little bit smaller, and then I'm going to get a little bit bigger there, and I'm going to come in with the light and just kind of go over top, pouncing my uh, tip on top of it, just to kind of blend it down a little bit, and then I'm going to come in with the dark, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I want it inside of that medium one that I did, okay, just creating a little bit variation there, now I'm going to come in with the medium, and blend that down, getting that color back into my pleat, right? There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my light. Now, when I come in with my light, you don't have to go all the way to the whole end of the tip here. You can kind of just leave a little bit of it if you want because then you're creating natural light reflection so i'll show you here when i've got this almost i think i'm going to add a little one right here kind of feel like that one should have had a little pleat here as well let's just add one in see how easy that is i mean that had to be 60 seconds right so there you go now you got a whole bunch of pleats in there. Now, when this dries up, I'm going to show you what you can do to add back in some more contrast and variation, okay? But for now, that one is done. You guys enjoying this? What's going on, dear? You're not even talking to me over there. It's What's going on in the chat? Anything. Well, what Karen say? Karen said, sometimes I work at it and my image grows. Yeah, so it just it goes bigger and bigger. Marker you Geek on the, you YouTube. Have to stay the lines. Marker Geek uses a lot of Stamping Bella. Oh, I like I like Stamping Bella. I have a lot of the older ones. Um, that I just love the tall, skinny little legs and whatnot. So here, this is my favorite favorite paint combination. I have a refill for each of these because I've refilled them definitely, if, if not once, twice. Um, but it's R eighty one, R eighty three, and R eighty four. Five, okay, and those that's my absolute favorite favorite pink combination for a nice soft baby pink So I'm going to turn it around and if you notice when I'm coloring I'm always flicking away from me because if you flick towards you You don't get the same. I don't anyway. I like to flick away from me I have feel like I have more control towards you. What's that? You get ink on yourself if you flick towards you. Yeah, that too so here, oh, let's talk about this one. Okay, so they've got a line coming in from this area here. They've got some lines coming from this area here. And then the same kind of idea on the little pleats. Okay, so see that there? Now you see here all the shading. And in there it's going to be very dark because there's a whole bunch of shadowing there, right? So this one, and then I kind of feel like this one should have a pleat and then we'll go like this. But I want the um, light here on the inside, so mine won't be exactly like the example, but that's okay. Um, I want these markers on this side of me too. Okay, so here, I'm gonna leave that side actually. I wanna kinda work one side and then the other. No, I'll just go. I don't like flipping like this because I find that one side dries a little quicker. And especially um, with me having my fan on, it helps dry things a lot quicker. And I don't necessarily want that, right? So blend that Heather's out. In the house. What's that, hun? Heather. Heather. It's oh, Heather house. made it. <clears throat> We're mesmerized watching the coloring. She's mesmer. Do 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 do. You will use all my affiliate links. You will shop all of the sales and save money. <laughs> all right. So I laid down the dark one. Now I'm coming in with the medium to blend out that dark. So I often use a three marker combination because it just you get such nice variation from that, right? So you'll notice I do that quite a bit. So now I'm going to close the gap here with the light color, the light marker, if you will. 
come over to this side and blend it out again. There we go. Okay, I like that. So now what I want to do is work on... Yes, coloring kind of, is very therapeutic. It is very therapeutic. And what I like to do is I like to put on my TV. And um, <laughs> if, if you're like one of the, the, the patty grooms of the world, you guys will remember the um, Family Man days. I think I watched Family Man every day for three months. It was like every day I was watching Family Man. I just love that movie. But... Um, right now I'm on the um, Ever After kick again with Drew Barrymore. Just love that girl. So I'm pretty much going to do the same little thing here that I did on the other one, just in a bigger scale. So same idea, just a little bit bigger. And the pleats, you can see they went small, small, and then they got big again. And we'll try a little one there. Let's blend those in a little bit with the light color. Like those little pleats are so easy and it's just breaking it down. You know what I mean? And the more images that you color, the more little things that you're going to kind of learn and get little tips for. And like these little balls I'm doing, th this can transfer over to something else. It can transfer over to ears and, you know, just different things, right? Because it's just a technique that you've learned now, right? So... Let's kind of come in a little bit here with a little contrast line. Blend that out. And I think I'm probably good with that. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Let's fill in some of these little gaps here that don't have any color. I want a little bit more color there. And then in here, I'm going to start with the medium. And I'm just doing little, little tiny, like I'm not trying to color like that in this little area. I'm just kind of doing little dots, connecting the dots, if you will, because it's such a small area. So I'm not going to be doing any much strokes here because it's just too easy to make a mistake. And when you're doing little strokes, take your time, just put those little dots in. And as long as you um, are not hard on your tips, like if you're not using your tips to color gems, don't use your tips to color gems. Use this side to color a gem if you must. And just an FYI, in next month's Copic coloring class, I am going to show you how to color some gems. And I've got some right here I'll show you. And no, it's not coloring them with your marker. But, um, oh, I'm going to have to bring the whole Ever tray over. Favorite story. Oh, really? That's so cool. Ever After is such a good why. movie. Because it's such a good movie. Drew Barrymore is amazing. Oh, that's Drew Barrymore? Yeah. Is so the these here the were clear faceted gems, and now they're not clear. So, and no, I didn't color these with a marker. So I'm going to go over this in the alcohol uh, marker class. And no, I didn't use alcohol inks. But um, I'm not going to tell you. It's part of the class, so I don't want to give it all away. But we are going to go over that. And the nice thing with this is I'm going to be able to show you how to do variations. So you can do dark, medium, and light. Because um, it's nice to do the big, the medium, and the small. Uh, there's a lot of embellishments that do that. But it's nice to have those color variations. Because when you have a color variation in your, in your little um, embellishments, it just adds so much more visual interest. And it's those little things like... The last class we just did this month, and as a matter of fact, if you join the free trial, you can still take that class because you get the link, but it's all about stepping up your cards, and it was all about the visual interest and how to take photography and bring it into card making, how to place your things, how to um, follow what the eye follows, and just a whole bunch of things to step up your card making. It, it was actually the class, in my opinion, um, turned out better than I thought it was going to turn out the way that it was executed. So the teacher is absolutely amazing, by the way. So it turned out to be a great class. No vanity in this family. I have it all. So I'm going to come in with a couple more dots. Now, another thing I do because my eyes are so bad is I have this little ot light thing here and it's um, a clippy thing. It clips on to whatever, what have you. It's got two little, I don't know. I picked this up at Michael's so, 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 so long ago. And it's got a little light. You can see that lights up there. Let me turn the light off so you can see. 
Okay, it turned off. Now it turned on. So for you, it's going to look pretty terrible. But I need to get in and see in this little area here. And I can just come in with this now and just kind of like get those little teeny areas that I'm missing. You know what I mean? So there we go. Awesome sauce. Put these ones away. So as you can see, oh, I think I went on the lines a little bit there too. As you can see, that comes together so, so, so easily. Let me bring in my skin color here. What have I got? 51. Let's bring in, uh, no, let's bring in my light one. I'm just kind of, ah, clean this up a teeny bit right there. And it's funny because um, there's companies that have the zero marker and they call it a uh, color lifter you're not lifting the color and if you can just remember that you're pushing the color down into the paper and look at it and remember it that way then things are going to make much more sense to you right it's not lifting it off so anyhow it's never perfect and when it's perfect it's not homemade anymore so don't stress out over it let's do our little our little shoes and the shoes I'm going to do just like she did here, okay? They're just plain gray. But do you notice how the back of her heel here is lighter and it's much darker here because the dress is causing a shadow here, right? Now over here, she is has it so that this area is causing a shadow down here and this is kind of not, there's no shadow there. So you do you, you do it the way you want to do it. Um, I'm going to, this girl has two shoes I think I missed the fact that she has two feet <laughs> and this one has two legs and two feet. Oh my gosh. They, they don't just have one. What is going on here? How did I miss that? Oh, and her little under her little chinny chin chin here. Missed that part. Alrighty. And I missed her ear. Holy Moses, Cindy Lynn. How is she going to hear anything with no ear? ear? It's right oh. ear. <laughs> right ear? It's right oh, ear. Get it? hee <laughs> hee you and your dad jokes I told Todd that he's supposed to talk to me more while we're here and, and he's supposed no to like no one's saying anything he's supposed forums. to well okay I love Eva I bet your wedding I bet your wedding was beautiful you didn't tell me that D Dana said that. that we're not married we're engaged we're not married in order to get married would mean that I would have to have his whole entire family in one place at the same time, and I'm not sure I could handle that. Right, hon? Maybe. I'm not sure I could deal with that. Okay, so I'm going to come in with C1, and I have this habit of holding my marker tops. Um, it's just a thing. I like to hold my marker tops. So C1, and then I'm going to come in with C3, and obviously the darker area is going to be here and on her little straps. And then I'm going to have the bottom kind of a lighter, like the whole bottom here is going to be much lighter. And over here, I'm going to kind of do the same idea. So I'm just going to bring a little bit here and bring the gray in there. I want to get married in Cuba at like some ancient grand cathedral place with my Cuban friends and family. Because I don't have family that would come except my auntie. So, I mean, you know, I don't, I, I've, I've been married. So I don't need the whole shindig, you know, whole shabam and whatnot. So, um, yeah. Oh, I put my hair away. I put the hairs away. There we go. All right, now for our hair, I am not going to follow this, obviously, because there's brown hair in here. But what I want to do is I want to take this and here you can see they went dark and her light is in this area. And then this is all dark. Now these, I'm going to show you a trick because I think that that looks weird. Personally, I think that looks weird. So before I get into the hair, let me show you something. You can go, and this is a bow. So those little circles you learned down here, I'm going in like this and I'm creating these little circles, okay? So I'm just gonna create a couple circles there. 
I'm going to create a couple more here. And then I'm going to come in with the medium color one. Same colors I did on her dress. And I'm doing the same thing, okay? Just doing those little little circles. I'm not, nothing special. I am trying to follow the, like, the little squiggly lines in here a little bit, though. Just because, you know, it creates a, a flow. So I'm going on the outside of that one. This one, a little bit in there. And then I'm going to go backwards now to, into the medium. Just blending that out. Kind of doing a little bit more of this motion now. Blending those out. Okay. And then the lightest one, kind of coming right out to the edges now. And leaving a little bit of white like we did along the bottom. So here. And there we go. So I thought they looked better like bows. I don't know. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, so let me know, honey, if, if it seems like more people are saying it's it looks good as bows or it should have been hair. Everybody's with all hair. my inky besties. That would be really cool. I'd just be like, hey, yo, we're going to <coughs> this Caribbean destination. Meet us on this beach <laughs> this time. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, you know what, honey? Imagine all the nice congratulations cards we would get. That would be cool. Okay, so let's do let's do the more difficult one first. I'm going to simplify this even more for you, okay? So if you are struggling with hair. Everybody's saying bows. Everybody's saying bows. Awesome. Bows. If you're struggling with hair, I'm going to simplify hair. this even a little bit more than this for you, okay? So what, I'm, what you're going to want to do is remember this. Pretty much... This is going to be your motion. Oops, excuse me. This is going to be the motion pretty much the whole time for your hair, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to look. The hair is kind of flowing this way, so your lines should go this way. You don't want your lines going this way because the hair line goes that way. And if you're coming down this way, you got a problem, right? So look at how it's going and imagine for a second, all right, if it's going this way, which way do the strands go, all right? So let's put in some strands. Now here, we're going to create a part, or yeah, a part. That's where her hair is going to part for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from there. And I don't worry too much about up here. They're all going to kind of come close together. But as I get closer to the tips, that's where I want these lines to kind of like, I want to be able to see them, okay? So that's how that looks right now. Okay, so I'm just following the lines and I'm simplifying this as easy as I can for you, okay? So you'll be able to do this, no problem. Now I'm going to come in with this one and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm, I'm making sure that my lines are, when I'm coming in, I'm touching them and going like this. So I'm creating this dark area here because that is where her part is, okay? And unlike our parts... <laughs> Hers is going to be very dark because all the hair is coming from there, all right, rather than like an actual human part. So coming in with more lines here, and then that's good, a little bit here, and then I'm going to come in with this one, and actually, I've even got C7 here for the hair. So this one, I'm, I'm sorry, you guys, it was R35 is the lightest, R37 for the medium, R59 for the third color and then we're going to use a c7 we're going to bring in a gray and i'm going to show you how that goes okay so we're going to come in and make these lines again make, making sure we're touching from where the part starts now here i don't want too too many down here because this is just your beginner okay i'm only going to put the, like maybe a couple and i'm going even lighter like see here how i'm hardly hardly those lines are so much uh, skinnier than these ones so I'm just doing a few and I'm trying to make sure I put a couple along those lines that the artist drew. And if you need to sit and do this and practice, sit and do this and practice. Have a scratch piece of paper and just sit here and go like this and go, okay, I'm ready. And then don't overthink it, okay? What's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to put some hair tolerant. into her face. And then you know what you do? You grab your Copic multi-liner. This isn't the multi-liner, but you just draw like another line and make it look like her hair was meant to go there in her face. You know what I mean? Uh, layer it up. Every, every mistake is a reason to add a layer, right? So now I'm going to go backwards from the dark one that I did. 
and I'm just going to come in with the medium and then the light and the light one I'm just kind of filling in a lot of those spaces let me get close here for a second so as you can see I've created a whole bunch of lines here in her hair and I didn't even have to really do too much like it, it wasn't difficult at all right so you can come back in and create a couple more lines with the dark one if you find that you've got too much blending going on like your two colors blended too much come in and add some dark lines now look at that you're good to go right you don't have to get like super fancy schmancy you're just learning right so this will get you started so really dark there and then a few little lines i'm getting all congested now i think what it is i turn my fan on and all the dust from the computer fans, like the computer, I don't know, it's the computer's sucking in dust and the fans blowing it at me, I think is what happens. So I'm not even sure. But I'm going to come in now with the darkest one. And I'm starting at that line I created on the other side. So now you can see that I've created that really good little area there, right? So I can come in and kind of just clean that up a little do a couple of my little lines down here and then the medium be Jeez, careful fancy smancy fancy smancy fancy smancy medium and then the light and then just look at it okay and think okay do i have to like add some more color in anywhere do i need to add any more strands anywhere i'm going to try to take out some of these white little areas just because that's what I prefer, but you do you. Okay, there we go. And up here, now what I'm going to do is, you can leave this like this, but I'm going to come in with this color and do the same thing here, okay? A few little strands like this. Turn it around. A few little strands like this. And now I'll bring it up so you can see how just adding that in and feathering it just kind of created that nice little darkness and I'm going to come out just a teeny little bit more from there with this dark the dark red just to kind of blend it in a little bit so it's not so stark so there there's your hair how easy was that the whole thing what's Allie doing now you should have heard she likes Allie coloring bald people you should have <laughs> Allie's hilarious so you should have heard her in the in the master class um, I was doing a technique. I did a lot of techniques with um, uh, watercoloring, just paperback books and die cutting out of them and just a lot of really fun things to step up your card making. And I was talking about the dictionary and the pages and I said, you know, you want to make sure you read it to make sure you know what's in the little heart or the like you don't want to do a heart that says, you know, aggravation because you use the A page or whatever. And, you know, your paperback books, you have to be careful, you know, what the what it says and whatnot. And Allie goes, yeah, make sure you're not using Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> to, to, to alter in your card making. Now here, what I want to show you is this, okay? Practice this. They're not perfect. They're just little curls, okay? That's all I'm doing. The whole thing here is going to be these, all right? So I'm going to start with the light, and I'm just going to come in, and there's already lines here. So just pretend you're following the lines that are already there and come in and just do all these little squigglies, okay? So there, there's my first ones. I'll show you. Focus, please. There we go. There's the first ones, okay? All the little squigglies. Now we're going to come in with the medium. And the medium, I want to make sure that... I want to make sure that I'm kind of putting it in areas like this, okay? Areas like this uh, in here. Because those are areas where I can almost see, like... Okay, so my space button. If I had another space button next to it, I would want to do you know, the medium kind of down where one space bun meets the other. So where one set of her curls meets the other is where I want to make sure I kind of concentrate, not concentrate think, but concentrate the ink in that area. And in these areas where her bun, 
or her whatever it is, uh, what do we call it? Her bow, excuse me, where her bow kind of meets the other girl's hair. Now, these long ones, you can kind of try to be careful, you know, and just kind of trace them if you want, the ones that come out. I'm not going to do the ones in her face. What's the point? I don't, you don't need to do that. And when I'm all done, you'll see why. So I'm going to come in with the dark one now. And again, I'm just covering over some of those little areas where I already put the other one concentrating in areas where I know it's going to be a little bit darker and then I'm going to come in with the medium again blend out some of that and, I'm, and when I say blend out I'm not rubbing this in when I say blend out I'm coming over it and just the two being together is going to blend somewhat I don't want this to be a super soft blend anyway because that's not what I'm going for right I mean I want it to be I want it to look curly Q. Let's get a little dark up here. Kind of do a little separation. Now I'm just going to kind of go in and add in little bits where I want some extra. You know what I mean? This one's a medium. Sorry, I went I went I went I went rogue there for a second. I get I get lost in my mind here doing this, so I just want to cover up some of these white spots inside. I don't mind too many on the tips, but we don't need a whole bunch of white spots, right? So there's your hair, curly hair, and all it was was a whole bunch of little curls, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you where I'm going to put my little lines just to kind of make things pop a little bit you could do a little bit of the gray in there too if you wanted but unlike here where she has a predominant dark area and by the way that's not my coloring that's the artist that's um you can see here there's a little pop-up in her head but nevertheless um that's i didn't color out of the lines uh, i'm going to add a little tiny bit of c1 um no c0 excuse me C1 is a little bit dark. Actually, I, I'm going to go C00 because I have it right here. Oh, I see what's happened. I have two zeros because I played cap roulette. <laughs> All right, so I'll just use this one. I'll fix those caps in a second. So I just want to kind of come into these little white things and add that C00. And this is my zero. So you are the wrong cap. And you are the right cap. Okay. C0. Okay, I want C0. Oh my gosh. Okay, 0. C0. C0. I have all my C0s on my 0. I had them both wrong. Oh my goodness. I'm losing my mind. Okay, that one's the 0. This is the C0. <laughs> both the wrong caps on it. So my 0, I can come in now. Allie says you're frozen. I'm Oh, I must be frozen for her. For, yeah. Um, it's not snowing yet. You can get Conqueror. You just can't get it on Amazon. You just need to look around, put it in Google, go to the end of the earth right now because I can't get you a link for it. I know that the paper mill, if you type in thepapermill.com, they carry it. And I almost ordered it, but it would have been $400, including shipping. And I was just like, I don't want to pay that. So I found a place here, but I have to buy it in 11 by 15, I think. So um, it's just, a, it, it, there, it's a supply issue. It's COVID. Everybody's worked at home, pandemic, you know what I mean? The paper, there's a shortage. So it's, it's, um, it's there. You just gotta, you gotta hang tight. I'm so sorry. So here I've got the number eight. Okay. Cause the number 10 is going to be a little too thick for me. I want the eight and I've got a super cute layout of a card. I'm going to show you too, because I want to show you how to get away with not fussy cutting this or using a machine. Okay. So let me find a piece of black scratch junky junk junk here we go okay so what I want to do is the first line I want to make is right here come on okay dot dot all right because that line indicates a difference in the material okay so you can do a couple right here 
oh, number eights. They don't flow quite as nicely. I'm going to do another one up here. I'm going to do one right here. Come on. Oh, you marker bugger. <laughs> I hate it when it does that. Okay. Put a little couple dots there. All right. And then let's go. You could do these in their hair too. Um, let me grab, let me grab an image. I want to show you guys something here. Oh. Yeah, Alex says they're going to be delightful. They're what? They're delightful. Oh, they're delightful. Okay. Perfect. Delightful. Thank you, Allie. Um, okay, let's do these. All right, so I just want to show you guys some other examples based off of what I just did, okay? Because these are all, this is where you can get just by starting with this hair, okay? So here, this one reminds me of my sister. She, she, this image looks a lot like what my sister looked like when she was young. But you can see the hair here. All it is is those lines, okay? That's all I did, but it's, it's stunning. You know what I mean? So lines, um, here, all I did was lines. There's no blending of the ink. Like here, the butterfly of course is blended. Okay. But here there's no blending. All it is is those lines, but look at the little dots too in the hair. Look how much, how much that adds, how cute that is. Like, look at this one. All that is is lines. Okay. But adding all of those little dots in there, and do you see her eyes, how they're reflective? Because there's crystal effects, glossy accents, whatever you want to call it. But it just makes it so much more realistic, right? This one too. There's not a lot of hair, but the hat, all it is is lines and it's different colors, right? And of course her eyes are reflective. Her whole dress is just lines, okay? So we're going to go into a lot of detail about this in the uh, master class, okay? So if I wanted to... I could go and you could add a whole bunch of dots and stuff in here. You could do some dotted lines and whatnot in here, but it, it doesn't really go with this image too, too much. So um, I don't think I'm going to do it, but I think I might come in here and I might do some half little white, little half moon type thingies here on the bottoms of each of these little things here. Okay, so there. So you see how much that added just by doing that, okay? You can add another little one on the back here of her shoe, maybe one on the front, one here. Um, oh, here we can do some dotting. We can do some dotting up in here on her bow, okay? Just to kind of make it cute. Let me go this way because I don't want to smear that. So you can just kind of visualize what it's going to look like, right? So look at that. A few little dots in your bow. See how cute that is? So there you have it. I mean, that's super easy, right? Let's do another one here and then join it here. So there. You should do okay. some on the other bow. Super cute, right? Oh, yeah. Do what? Never mind. You're doing it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Todd didn't think I was going to do both bows. All right, so I'm going to stop there because you can overdo it, right? So there's our image. Now, let's talk about what we can do with this image and not have to cut it out, okay? Because there once was a time where this is what we did with every single image. We just kind of, and you can go and do all this kind of dotting. This is just the Copics that I colored her with, okay? all around in here. And another little tip for you, um, see her little, her little shirt that's stickles. Okay. And there's stickles down here and stickles there and, you know, a little dotting and, you know, I mean the little lines all in the little flower there and all the dotting in the middle. Right. So adding those kinds of things just make the world a difference. So I'm going to put this one to the side for a moment and I got out a card here and I'm going to pull out a bow and some of you guys are going to know exactly what it is and some of you are going to be like what is that how do I do it it's linked down below for you it's a uh, Tammy Wilson double double bow double looped bow I don't even know what you call it I don't know what she called it but when I was with Stampin' Up um, Tammy Wilson was like oh I wanted to be her when I grew up 
I, I would always comment on her Instagram. I'm like, I want to be just like you when I grow up. I just adored her cards and her style. It was, uh, I was very fond of it. But nevertheless, she does this very amazing bow. And if you know anything about Stampin' Up, then you probably know who Tammy Wilson is. Um, and you know what her bow is. And I did one of the bows for this particular card. I went to my scraps bin. Not this month, the month before, we talked all about scraps and how to keep them organized and how to pull from them and use them and yada, yada, yada. So, um, oh, this was snail mail. I actually only saw this side. I was like, oh, that kind of matches her dress because I took this picture. Actually, that's a lie. I took this one, okay, over to my scrap drawer and I just kind of used the teal and looked for a color that was going to match and I found this one. And this one was snail mail, but that's okay. Paper has two sides, and sometimes we got to just cover one side, right? Now, this is going to be fun. If you have pattern paper, and I kept saying, like I've, I've said a couple times when I've ordered pattern paper and done an unboxing, I'm like, I am going to bring pattern paper back. I just love doing things with pattern paper on my pictures, on my pictures, on my papers, on my cards, right? So yeah, that looks good to me. Uh, let's see, because I got out a piece of ribbon. So I wonder if I want that a little bit. No, nope, that's probably going to be good. Let's just go with it. I like the so, other side better. That's okay. Yeah. Nobody asked you. I know. <laughs> I love you, hon. Oh, yeah. Todd's going away tomorrow for the for the whole weekend. He's going to be gone. He's going up to um, where are you going? Camrose. Camrose. Yeah, Camrose is far. So I cut my mat to four and a quarter by five and three eighths. I cut these pieces a quarter inch smaller and then you know this one was three inches this was I started at an inch and three quarters yada 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 um I don't know it's what I ended up with you can eyeball it this was more of a let's let's honor all of our I want to see you thumbs up for all our red-headed girls or if you know someone who's a redhead and now you're like oh I'm totally making or this you card missed that whole conversation everybody has redheaded kids oh everybody has redheaded kids yeah oh very cool Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Let me put this other piece down. I was going to try and put this down and then lift it up in a way so that the glue didn't touch my mat, but I'm going to go like this. I just like, I like ribbon. And wait until you guys see my studio tour. I had a ribbon storage built in and OMG. I should actually, when I'm back at Heather's, I should, I should, I should adopt all your mom's ribbon, Heather, because... You can never have enough ribbon and that is just to kind of keep those down flat. Okay. So now I've also got this in this one here and this one, I think I'm going to put like there. So this image is going to go here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by just trimming around it. If you're a little bit nervous, bring in your acetate and then you can kind of gauge where things are going to be. Let's start right about here, okay? And then we're gonna go here. And there's a thing I like to do around the outsides of my images, and I'm gonna show you what that is. I used to do this all the time. And unfortunately, I'm sure no one here followed me back in 2010 when I had just the blog. So, I mean, look at this now, okay, watch. How cool is this turning out already? Isn't that like turning out beautiful already? So I'm going to slim this down a Lee little bit. Know when your mythical tour is happening. When what? Your mythical tour is happening. Oh, my studio tour? Ugh. Before Christmas? After Christmas? Once I've been here a year? <laughs> oh, no. I can't say for sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do on here, um, I can do one of two things. I can put it on a black mat, okay, let me just show you, put it on a black mat, and that'll kind of ground it, and I might do that as well as what I'm going to do, but I am going to pull out a, I think a point three will work good here, uh, yep, okay, I'm going to pull out a point three, this is just a 
I don't know, this is a Mont art one, actually. I got this at HomeSense. Um, I'm always buying these kind of things because I don't like using my multi-liners for this kind of stuff because I use these. These are Copic multi-liners, and they're linked in the coloring um, on the kit.co, but these uh, don't bleed. So if you've got a little spot, you know, you stamp it, and you just miss that spot and you don't have a stamp positioner or you didn't use a stamp positioner or whatever it is. Remember I told you if you go out of the lines with her hair, you can just bring in your Copic multi-liner. This will not bleed. So I try not to use those for most things. So here, what I'm going to do is I've got this here picture, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw a line and I'm just going to go dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. And as you can see, my line is not straight and I don't care because it's going to look super cute. I'm going to pull towards me though, because I find that I get straighter lines and better precision that way. I'm going to do one dot there because I came into the corner and I'm going to go one, two, three, a line, one, two, three, a line, one, two, three, and then I'm going to turn it. I'm going to come up this way, one, two, three. And if you want to try this and you're a little bit nervous about it, okay, cut it a little wider and then practice, all right? Because you can always trim it and make it smaller, right? So it'd be no big deal. And don't worry about it being straight. The one tip I have for you here is do it on a surface that is going to be slippery. Don't do it on like um, silicone or, you know, glass or whatnot because your hand doesn't slide as much on that, like plastic. Do it on paper because your hand's going to slide more, right? Yeah, you do so, three dots instead of four. Uh, because threes are where it's at. So there, okay. So now I've closed it in and I used to actually put my initials in the little corner of each one. Now, one last thing I want to do here, because we left it on here, I want to get my Tombow and this is the N95. And this is actually perfect because this is right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I just kind of want to this one's really dark. Do I have a lighter one? This one's kind of dark and my tip's kind of yucky. I must have a lighter one. Is that the lightest? It is the lightest, but I have a new one, so let me use my new one. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let's just go back to our Copics because I can use C... Okay, I'm going to use C0, and I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to do like a little bit of feathering. Okay, and I'm going to bring it up close so you can see. Okay, see how I just feathered it just ever so slightly? Another thing I used to do, and you might like this, I don't know. You do you, do you and decide. I've done this to a lot of images. I've come with a light gray, and I've gone all the way around the image, and just trace it in like this. Okay, and then you create like a nice shadow all the way around. And if you don't like fussy cutting, do that and then cut along that line. You know what I mean? And then you're, if you go a little close, it's no big deal. You know what I mean? Because you didn't cut into your image. So, you know, there you have that. Jean. Is someone picking on my Jean? Shaking in her boots over there. Shaking her boots. Shaking the boots. Okay, now here, I'm going to... No, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, I'm going to put this. I'm going to put, yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to, because it kind of grounds it a little bit more. So I get really technical with this here, and I just go like this, and I eyeball it. So technical. And then before I commit, I just bring the arm down a little so I can see. And I do this before, I don't glue it. I do this before I glue it, because then... I can always wiggle around my glue if I'm not happy, right? So there, we shall do this. I like the dots because I have somewhere to hold it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now this one, I'm not putting any of this on pop dots or glue dots or whatever, foam adhesives, foam square, razy uppy, you know. And there's a gnat. That is not cool at all. Yeah. <laughs> I've been hanging around you for too long, honey. 
Your dad jokes are rubbing off on me. Let me see. Oh, maybe. Okay, wait. Let's see with the bow, okay? Because I did, I did. I'm going to actually complete a card tonight. What do you know? I wonder if I should splatter. No, I'm not going to splatter. But there's my bow. Okay, so it's a double, a double bow. And I did um, this holographic white that you can kind of see a little bit of teal in it. And a pink and a black, okay? Because the black kind of grounds it. So I'm just kind of picturing here. No, I'm not going to raise it up because I want this bow to kind of sit over top of this. So I'm not going to raise this piece up because then the bow just kind of is a little bit too high, right? So um, most of these were my favorite things, papers. Uh, the pink was just some random textured cardstock, if you will. Uh, the pattern, these two patterns are the uh, my favorite things. I did link them for you guys, and they are in stock, so you're in luck. There we go. And then this one, you know, I got to tell you, I have my glue dots over in my shipping basket because when you place an order, we hide a little tiny little clay Wilbur in the ladybug in your order. So I have my little glue dots over here so I can do that. But I had a package of the new pixie glue dots. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just pull those out. Yeah, I put them right back. So I think I might have to start buying up a bunch of glue dots and just do a comparison because I did not like those at all. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But I have been using... Um, these are the Stampin' Up! ones. They come from glue dots, okay? I have been using glue dots for so long that, and it's not about being anal, okay? Like, I am that way on a lot of my stuff, like, especially this. I don't use anything other than a Cricut pick. But it's not about that. It's about the fact that, well, here's an example. Um, I cannot put something down on it and pick up the glue dot like it just wants to stick there and I just I used it I tried to use them today for something and I was not happy with that at all so yep nope okay where do I want this I kind of wanted you a little closer down there but oh well that's okay maybe we will lift you up just a tiny bit yeah there we go all right so look at that look at that so Maybe dang cute so cute i don't know what the insert's going to be um and i'm not going to do that in the after dark i've got something really special planned for the after dark i am going to do a very pretty um very loose watercolor distress i want to distress what oh i yeah i got a particular kit today not one of the ones that it's not my favorite things it's not spellbinders it's not it's a sinuses stamp kit so I'm going to um, do something with the stamps in that because I was very inspired. I don't think I cut my pink to the right size because it's not really landing on my white very good. But now we'll give this a little haircut after I have a sip of tea. Cheers to all my Davis tea lovers. All right, so one two and I don't cut them this all together I cut them separately and I cut them at different lengths because I just do <laughs> just because because I can so there it is okay nice little messy bow cute little girls your red hair there you have it all my all my inky besties are like let's go after dark it's after dark time let's go it's after dark Woo, woo. Everybody thinks it's adorably cute. Well, thank you, everybody. And thank you for joining us tonight for the Fun Reasons to Make Cards, episode 36. So every single Thursday, another fun reason to make a card, okay? Our red-headed friends. So outside of all our birthdays and anniversaries and all the regular stuff, we get a break. And we get to just make one fun card. How awesome is that? So thank you all for joining me. Thank you, Mary and Allie, and Kimberly, and Gina, and Mary, and Jane, and Joe. Thank you all. I will see many of these names 
over in the after dark and we'll see if we see any new names. So do you want to say good night, honey? Good night, honey. <laughs> Until I see you again.